Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Art Lounge Alley. This is project part 68. Um, and this is where I am in the project. Um, did a lot of work, actually, on this one. Uh, there was a point where I was kind of unsatisfied. I was like, I, I don't know. I just don't feel like it's close to how I pictured it, how I imagined it. So I went about and fixed a lot of things. Um, I went over the uh, the line work. Just cleaned up the lines more, defined them a little bit more. Um, and obviously put, out, uh, put a lot of colors in. Um, there's still, there's still some things to do and I still want to tweak around with the colors. Um, I changed the background as well. I changed the colors in the background. Um, but there's a lot of refining to do, you know, just going and zooming in and filling in these little, these little areas. I'm going to start out with, maybe I should start out with the very background. And just cleaning things up that way. So I'm going to do buildings and see how much I can clean up and how much I could fix. Zoom out to see. It's not bad. It's, it's at that point where I have to be careful and I don't want to overwork the drawing and I have to pick my battles carefully. Like I don't want to add nitty gritty details to the backgrounds, you know, as they should be towards the back. You know, they shouldn't have to pop out as much, let's say, as what's going on in the fore foreground, you know, so gonna have to spend some time to make sure that um, yeah it's done it's done right clean this up whoa just make sure all these little areas are properly filled in satisfied with somewhere here hmm maybe it wasn't here it was this building right here I had way too many gaps And I'm still like, I don't know, 50-50 on the sky and the color of the sky. 
So I might end up working on that some more today. I'm going to go ahead and say that the inspiration for this building right here, the one that I just worked on, is a modem. Like, it looks like the top of it just reminds me of, like, a modem. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if that's really where the idea manifested itself. Oh no, I just realized that because I have this layer, colors are turning out to be a little different. So I don't know about you guys, but um, on the topic of the election, something that I have been talking about these past few days since it is the midterms, um, I do find that there is value in voting. You know, I think it's better than not doing anything and uh, allowing basically the fascist party to start achieving their goals. Um, but I don't find it to be foolproof, you know, that there are multiple things that come into play when it comes to that stuff, you know, especially the more zealous people become in it, the more, um, the more boundaries they're willing to cross, you know, and there is no way for us as people to really know, um, what, what goes down, you know, politically, like, who ends up becoming corrupt, who ends up being bought out, right? Like what kind of, uh, what kind of measures people are taking, the more uh, opposition they get, you know, what sort of things that could, they could do. So, um, you know, I do still think it's important to vote and I, I voted, absolutely. I hope you guys did too. Um, but I don't rely on it. You know, I don't think that um, the wings are really that different, you know, that I think essentially they all want you to depend on them because if you don't depend on them, that means they don't get the taxes and 
uh, the campaign money and all that funding and everything, you know, to convince you that they're uh, they're fit for the position of exploiting your money, basically. Um, so they want you reliant. So they're gonna they're not gonna do a lot to actually make things better for you, as you guys have saw. The most important thing, I think, and it's really interesting how um, the 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 focus has shifted to things that don't really improve the economy as much. Like they might improve your individual rights, right? Like, for instance, of course, abortion is important uh, for things like rapists. You know, those crazy fucking people that are out there who are doing insane, disgusting things, incest, like all that other stuff. That that it absolutely has to exist, without without a doubt. Um, uh, but it was there before, and now it's it was taken away because of political meddling, right? They decided to stick their nose into that private business. Um, and of course, to make things more difficult for the, op the opposing party, because that's their tactic. It's always been their tactic. Whenever they're not in power, they create as many problems as possible and then blame the party that it's posing them as the ones responsible for basically lying, manipulating, gaslighting to get, uh, to get votes and to get people to sign up for them instead. It's just a disgusting tactic. Um, the, the dishonesty while still talking about religious values, like we're religious people. Meanwhile, they're manipulating and exploiting people anyways. Um, but yeah, you know, just this idea and at times, I'm sure they work together to maintain this part, uh, this power, basically, over people, um, so that they could continue to exploit taxes. You know, we don't get to choose where our taxes go. That's one. You know, if we're, if our, uh, let's say, your neighborhood isn't great, the roads are damaged. Um, you know, the public schools are failing and they're awful. Teachers aren't getting paid well. Um, all that stuff, you know, you could say, I want my taxes to go there. I want my taxes to improve the schools locally. I want my taxes to improve, um, road conditions. I want my taxes to, uh, you know, provide livable wages or improve libraries or, you know, facilities for people to grow, learn, and, uh, do something with their time. And to know that, you know, um, their taxes are being used for for improving conditions so that we could be happy with the, uh, with the economy, with the leaders, with people, and how they're utilizing our hard-earned uh, hard money. Uh, but instead it's being used for, as you guys have seen, even during a moment where it was absolutely crucial for people to start taking responsibility for their job and their position. They were giving tax breaks to corporations, basically corporations that banked off of other people's hard work, uh, and continued people to, and continued to tell people to like go out and make even more money for those corporations. Like it was just repulsive, you know. Um, but now, even when uh, those same people aren't in position to make the, these kind of rules and regulations. We're seeing, uh, we're not seeing much improvement. You know, we're not seeing businesses actually um, making decisions that benefit the economy. In fact, businesses are just making uh, decisions to benefit themselves. But the way they benefit themselves is from the economy, you know, from the people. So they don't want to give back to the people, they just want to take from people. And there's no regulation for that. You know, there there is nothing that says like, hey, you can't do that. You're part of the economy. You're depending on people who depend on the economy. You can't just completely detach yourself and just bank off of it. That's exploitive. That's corruption. That's not what uh, we're here for. As politicians, we're here to make sure that you guys stick by every uh, by the rules that everybody else is following you know people are following the rules which you're banking off of 
you know, them paying taxes, them uh, contributing towards your uh, business in a proper manner, you know, not, um, not make, you know, following the rules and regulations for it. And consequences shouldn't only apply to them, it should also apply to these corporations, which are, they're trying to avoid, you know, they're trying to figure out ways not to do it while demanding that everybody else does. So it's this double standard bullshit, basically, that people are putting up with for some reason. They're like, yeah, it's okay that these corporations are exploiting us and that they're trying to avoid all the responsibility while loading more and more of it on workers at, while and at the same time telling them that their time and dedication isn't worth raises isn't worth living conditions you know it's just worth the time that we need to get more money so it's the sickness it, it's an absolute sickness i'm not saying that as a jab out of dissatisfaction i think that these people who are making these decisions who are running these businesses are absolutely mentally sick like that's why greed is considered um to be a sin it's not just a slap on the wrist by somebody who just doesn't like it it's because it's something that festers inside of a person and then in the wrong hands it ripples through society as you see it now um so anyways like what what, I, what i'm getting at is that uh even though i voted i don't depend on that system to fix anything you know they've been doing this for generations they're playing a lot of things and as i mentioned um they want you to depend on them so they're they're gonna give you very little while taking a lot that's just their approach you know and until people actually come together and say, listen, we're paying you taxes to do your job. You're not doing us a favor by doing your job. You're, you know, you're there because we voted for you. You're there because you promised us that, that you were actually going to look out for their, our best interest, which is what the job is about. And you're doing the opposite. So it's time for you to go. Um, and people have to kick them out, you know, but um, regardless of others who are pro their corruption you know because there's always going to be people who are supporting that because it supports their corruption you know they're they're basically saying like hey we're going to enable people who are going to uh, help us justify our corruption and there are way more people being exploited than there are people exploiting so i think um and what that does is it ripples through, right? It creates um, anger, it creates frustration, it creates really insane scenarios, you know, things that if we're around to see, um, we would be appalled and we'd be like, that's, that's really depressing, that's awful. You know, so rather than standing aside and pretending that it's not there, it's better to come together and change things so that they don't continuously repeat and they don't exacerbate to a point of a pandemic. You know, none of us liked when that happened. A lot of people were scared, I'm sure. A lot of people were like, what is going on? You know, and felt helpless. But now that things are back in order because we took action as people, everyone's lighting up again and they're just like, oh, it's okay. Oh, what? We, we got uh, Nazis basically trying to gain more and more uh, leverage and power or regain as much leverage and power and what's the big deal you know so it's it's this bad decision that is coming back around of just like not finding it important enough to really push for big change you know i think um just making the demands um by protesting all the time and you know being at the white house basically with protest signs and i'm not inciting violence i don't agree with that but peaceful protest that causes disruption that's what protests are if they're not causing disruption they're not a protest it's just people standing around the difference between people standing around and a protest is that it's disruptive 
that there's a lot of people and they're making demands that, hey, we're not happy with your uh, leadership, with your use of our taxes, with your decision on how to improve our, the economy. You're not doing any of that. In fact, people who are exploiting all of us are getting more and more while we're getting less and less. And that's just making things worse. It's bringing about depression. It's bringing out drug and alcohol abuse, which is creating more problems. Uh, there's environmental uh, environmental disasters like any of the businesses right running uh if they were to face that many problems they would instantly fire people just be like get out you're not doing a good job you're making our business look worse but for some reason this sort of business people aren't uh taking enough action on it um but yeah so you know i'm even though i did vote uh i still think the power lies with the people, not with within politicians and their policies, and how they're. Uh, whoops, getting carried away here. Uh, this is this is the ground, so I'm gonna go with the ground layer. Um. So it's important to to uh, organize, and instead of giving into the. Uh, divisive sort of tactic that a lot of these fascist corporations are uh, using, which is like firing, as you guys seen in social media, people are getting fired for um, from companies that are well known for being exploitive. Facebook, right? Like in all the amount of propaganda that they are allowed and all the amount of spying that uh, they've done, you know, basically infringing all of your privacy at, without any restraint um no and then twitter with all that nonsense going on none of these companies are uh trustworthy companies they're in fact the opposite of that you know they're they're backing basically all the fascist uh politicians and policies and so on and so forth and they're basically doing that like they're um, they're making people more and more dependent on them um, or actually just um, putting more and more people on board who follow their uh, fascist agenda. You know, they're firing people who are saying no to it, who are actually trying to create um, a fair um honest and decent condition and instead i'm sure they're going to be hiring people who favor the opposite of it and that's huge that's problematic because once more and more social media like facebook is meta uh, and meta is instagram meta is facebook meta uh, owns other companies as well and the more and more they choose to disrupt these things um the more people continue to use those apps they're going to enable it more and more and i think it's important for us to talk about it with people and spread more and more of this idea so that people could be aware of like hey you know we need other social media platforms that uh, aren't going to put money in the pockets of um, people who support uh fascism who support oppression who support racism who support like sociopathic culture you know all that stuff is is driving things worse and worse it's making people more and more indifferent it's making people more and more sociopathic you know i don't care it doesn't it doesn't apply to me you know that approach you know it's the same thing as like Let's say if people were being thrown in the gas chamber, I don't care, it doesn't apply to me. You know, what's the difference between you, let's say, not you specifically, but what's the difference between somebody who says that and somebody who was part of the fascist re uh, uh, regime, the Nazi party, and somebody who stood aside when people were being gas chambered. And they're waiting basically for that opportunity, again, where people are so indifferent and so, uh, responsive to you know authoritarian sort of uh, 
conditions so that they can continue to push for that that scenario. Um, there is a there is an experiment like that actually, and um, I forget exactly what the name of it was, but basically they had somebody come in. They conducted an experiment where they had a person come in um, into a room, into a lab room, and they sat them down and they said, "Okay, we're going to have you press these buttons, and it's going to present, uh, it's going to send a shock to the person in the other room. You know, so we're going to need you to do that." And the person's like coming in with a clipboard. They're wearing like a lab coat, and the person who's sitting there is like, "Okay." So he goes and he sits down, and presses it, sends in a shock, and he hears another person in the other room screaming. And he's like, oh my God. And um, you could see immediately that the person has um, a reaction to it. And they're like, oh, is that person okay? And they're like, well, you know, don't worry about it. This is part of the experiment. We need you to up the voltage and then send the shock again. And then the person is like, um, all right. And again, they do it, and then the person screams in agony again. You know, this time it's even more. Um, and then the person's concerned, and the uh, other person in the lab coat is like, okay, we need you to up vo the voltage and send in the shock again. And each time they're telling this person to up the voltage more and more, and the person's hearing uh, the other one in the other room scre screaming in more agony. And they're not saying like, hey, why am I doing this? let me stop doing this you know like the, i'm not enjoying the fact that this person's in excruciating pain like what's the purpose of this and are they okay just because they're told to do something based off of these uh you know really superficial things like lab code and a clipboard you know like basically these uh authoritarian sort of dress codes people were just saying okay to it you know so um and of course in the, in the experiment there was no person in the other room it was just somebody uh there who was screaming because they knew that's what they had to do they weren't actually getting any shocks but it was just an experiment to see like how do people react to these kind of things like when they see a certain uh, you know, uniform or whatever else, then that means that I should be doing it without question. And that's basically, you know, what what all these capitalists and fascists are uh, pushing towards, especially during the pandemic, right? People were like just marching to their death, going in to work, catching the virus, coming back home. If they had kids, like they didn't think about that. They weren't like, oh, I have kids, oh, they're going to get sick, they might die. Like, my own kids are going to die because of this, like, sick system of these people who are total sociopaths. They don't care about anything other than just numbers, you know, and, and getting more and more money. Tell me that's not a sickness. It's absolutely a sickness. You know, there is nothing... Uh, there, there's nothing that's more valuable than, than another person's life like that. That's insane. But people weren't questioning it. Um, so basically, it's just that experiment all over again, and people were just like going along with it. They were complying with it. Um, so we we just have to fight against that because we can't have can't have another regime like that. That's insane. It's it's sick. Um, and we need to come together as people and actually start protesting. Because again, as I mentioned, I don't believe it, that uh, these wings, there is a reason why they're called wings, right? You got the left and right wing. What are they a wing to? A body. You know, they're a wing to a body that is basically trying to maintain its power over the people to make sure they continue to serve and give them money and profits. Um, so there's a lot of corruption there. and. If, if it's referred to as a wing, that means they're flapping together to make sure everything continues to fly, right? So um, it's it's kind of difficult to say how much of this is actually orchestrated, how much of it is honest, you know? So what we, what we are seeing is 
people are getting uh, discarded more and more. Like, it, it, nothing is improving. Education systems aren't getting better. They're getting worse. B banning books? Like, what is this, 1984? Um, you know, like, that, and the fact that it is, like, 1984, and that's an action done, uh, uh, not ni like also like Fahrenheit four five one. You know, it's another that's another tale talking about these exact same mistakes, these problems that arise once these sort of actions come into play. It's like by the book, basically, these things are happening, and people are just like, oh, well, I guess not challenging it, not being like concerned, you know. And it's not just, and I'm going to say it's not just the government. There's definitely people who believe in the fascist regime. It's not just people who are working in a government who are like, yep, yeah, let's do that. There, there's a, mu a bunch of people who are brainwashed, who are brain damaged, uh, who support that and agree with it. Uh, you know, it's a sickness. It's just as much of a sickness as um, greed. Um, you know, hubris is one of the sins. You know, it, that's arrogance, basically. And it, and again, it's a, it's a sin because it is parasitic, and uh, it's it's like a virus. It spreads. It also it doesn't only spread within your mind and your body. It also spreads to other people. So, you know, these things are there to say, like, hey, don't do these things because it's going to drive things into chaos. It's going to make things worse all around. And when one person thinks that way, another person thinks that way, and they start, especially if they have power, right? If they have, like, uh, influence and there's a lot of people who listen to them because they're like, oh, this person's successful. This person can get anything or has all the things that I want. So I'm going to try to listen and... Uh, mimic what they do and what they say and how they act and then little by little before you know it there's like an entire uh basically groupy form around them um doing as they do and as they say without really thinking about uh, the, the whole morality of it and how crazy and uh insane it is So we got to start demanding um, better conditions, you know, and that's something that I mentioned before, there is, you know, in history, back in the day, people were working like children were working. And I'm talking about 10, 11 year olds, eight year olds were working in factories and dying under terrible conditions uh, because people wanted more profits. You know, they wanted more money. So these are serious things that have happened in history um, hold on a second yeah these are things that happened um, and you know we could learn from that we could be like um, that's problematic like this is what the outcome is going to be if we keep following that you know, this is, uh, we have, like, enough in history to show, like, hmm. If we do these things, this is where it's going to lead. You know, this is um, how problematic things are going to get.
Nah, I don't like that. I think it's a little too dark. But I do want to change it around a little bit. Maybe make the glass a little bit darker. But yeah, just uh, just going back to what I was getting at, um, you know, the idea that back in the day, you know, there were all those conditions that created so many problems, so much issues. And people came together, they protested, they demanded change uh, over and over and over again. You know, there was a point where um, people gathered and they said, hey, we got to come together and we got to make sure that this is enacted and we got to do as much as we possibly can uh, until it is set into law. So they had, they banned child labor. You know, they had that banned. Uh, they also um, made it law that eight hours was the max that they would work because back then it was 16 hours. You know, sometimes it was like 11 to 16 hours that people were working, basically. And, of course, meager wages. Terrible wages. But uh, people came together and they were like, uh, no, we got to make sure that um, things change. They, th they change so it's better. And because they came together and they were determined, uh, they were protesting and they shut down the economy uh, to make sure that people understood like, hey, we're together on this as people. We're going to make sure that uh, this comes to fruition. Like we are uh, determined no matter what to make lives better for ourselves and to prevent you guys from like abusing our taxes and abusing us as people who are providing you with the opportunities to be these exploitive nut jobs, basically. And, and basically that's what we have to do as well. You know, we have to, at some point, as generations um, start to shift, right? As uh, the old die out and the young take over, the same mistakes are going to be made. So uh, as people, we have to uh, come together and send that same message as they had to back then as well. I'm trying to see if I could spot any other areas um, that have like little gaps in between colors. Yeah, so like one of the things that we have to demand is livable wages. You know, that isn't being fixed at all. That's something that I think is incredibly important that would benefit everybody. You now, people are focusing on things, as I mentioned earlier, like they're focusing on abortion, which is, again, it is important. But what really makes people's lives better, uh, you know, what really helps them choose or make better decisions is basically getting livable wages, being able to afford things, um, not being freaked out about, uh, you know, food prices now that are skyrocketing as well, rent that's skyrocketing, like all those things um, really determine people's actions. 
So to complain about, oh, our, there's crime and then there's like uh, disasters and it's because people are doing stupid things. Well, one of the reasons why is because they're desperate for certain things and they end up making bad mistakes out of those scenarios. So um, it's all systemic, you know, to defund education systems and then complain about people making stupid mistakes, you know, or bad decisions or crime. Uh, not providing livable wages and complaining that people are, you know, committing crimes and doing drugs and all the other stuff. Well, yeah, they're going to do all those things because they have miserable living conditions. So as I mentioned, because it is systemic, you can't depend on the system that's creating these problems systematically. You know, that is purposely taking your tax money and making it worse all around. And that's, that's why I say it's really important that people come together and they start forming these protests everywhere. It shouldn't be centralized to like one area. It should be everywhere uh, to pose um, a problem to all these people who are exploiting everybody, basically making things a lot, lot worse, you know, and in return, uh, it is creating these environmental disasters as well, because again, people are, uh, taking shortcuts to pocket more money because of all this greed that's going on. It's rippling through and it's unsustainable basically is what I'm getting at. While other countries are actually, uh, booming economically because they're at, they're listening to the people they're actually trying to uh, improve the lives of the people so that the people don't turn against them and uh, make it worse for them so this is like it's more than just you know war on women and their rights to choose and their rights to decide what to do and uh and all that stuff it's more uh, it's it's very much a class war that we're dealing with and a lot of people who are basically or consider themselves to be any upper class because they're exploiting people because they're exploiting the system to make more money they're banding together as you see these corporations and they're uh, using these tactics of firing people you know raising prices that don't make any sense that don't have anything to do with inflation like w w that's something i mentioned before you know they're saying oh it has something to do with the war you know it has something to do with this shortage or that shortage why is netflix raising um m raising the monthly fee what is there a shortage of for netflix internet signals there's a shortage of internet signals you know what i mean like it's nonsense. They're absolutely doing things to put the press on people while continuing to exploit them, um, while more and more people are dying off from their negligence. We can't have a political system like that. It's, un it's unsustainable. It creates a terrible ethos. It echoes through people and how they treat each other, how they see everybody, uh, what kind of state of mind they're in. You know, it's uh, this like everybody for themselves is perfect for them it's perfect for them like people are following the book of exploitation to the t here like how do you get people to um band against each other scarcity you make it so that they are just uh way too they're freaked out and they need to uh do as we tell them to otherwise you know they're gonna be in that scarcity realm And rather than people seeing that and being like, hey, let's band, band together and just like make it really difficult for them, protest, you know, be outside uh, of the White House with um, protest signs demanding change, you know, demanding that our needs are addressed, our needs for livable wages, our needs for uh, progressive jobs and progressive environments that appreciate their workers rather than gaslighting them, making them think that they're useless so that they could 
pay less money. You know, that's corporate greed. That's something they're detaching themselves from the economy and focusing on profits. And we can't have that. You know, we need regulations that bring stability to the economy, that bring stability to our lives. You know, we're not here to live and s for their uh, profits. We're here to live and enjoy life. And I think a lot of people need to wake up to that. Uh, instead of like serving and playing these team games like oh I'm team this I'm team that dude you're at the end of the day none of these people that you're teaming for or rooting for give a damn about you like you'll pass you'll die tomorrow and they'll be glad I don't care so like these people who are like oh Elon Musk is right or this person's right they wouldn't touch you with a 10 foot pole like none of them would care about you like if you're around there and you tell them how much you care they'll just laugh at you and move on you know, but they think that because I'm supporting them that I'm like them in some way. It's a weird sickness. That's what I'm saying. Like, some people are mentally damaged. It's this, like, crazy spite game um, that they, they're playing, which is against their own personal interest. Like, it's that's mark of crazy. They're where spite is more important than their livelihood. Um, if that's not crazy, I don't know what is. Uh, but yeah, I'm absolutely confident that is a sign of a crazy person, and we can't rely on them to dictate or care about what they have to say uh, to dictate the economy and dictate the direction that the economy is going in. When, when we recognize that there are crazy people who are inciting all sorts of stupid... Um, you know, approaches to social interaction, we can't give them uh, the time of day. Like, it's not important what they have to say, they're just being insane. And we have to interact with people who are uh, more sane in order to move towards progress and not get stuck in their stupid loops. Um, but that's my rant, everybody. It's an important one. I think that regardless of what political outcomes are, I think that it's an important trajectory because they're still, despite whatever the outcome is, they're not addressing the most crucial things, which is great education systems, livable wages, livable hours. You know, you're, again, the hour thing is really important because you're spending your entire day earning them profits. Um, just do the math from the time that you get up to the time you get home. And by the time you eat, and you finish, you know, uh, what are you left with? There's barely any time. And that's why people lose sleep. That's why they get sick. They don't get enough sleep. They're haggard. They're frustrated because they don't get enough sleep because they're trying to enjoy as much of their day as possible before repeating the same thing for exploitive companies. Why? You know, it's not. There is nothing that says, you know, this is how things should be other than greedy, deranged companies that people have been programmed to accept as uh, the way. But as history showed, you know, as I mentioned, um, you guys should read about the eight hour, um, where that came from, how that came about. And you'll see that it's changed from even more of an exploitive condition because people came together and they said, hey, we've had enough. Like we gotta, we gotta change things so it's the better can't just let these people rain, uh, you know, free reign our lives. And our livelihood. Um, so don't get discouraged by the political outcomes if they're not in a progressive direction. Uh, the important thing is to come together and actually demand that change. You know, if there's thousands and thousands of people outside of the White House on a daily basis, they're going to listen. On a daily basis, that's chaotic for them. And they're going to have to listen to what people are saying. Um, so the more people organize this, the more that they do it everywhere, not just centralized. You know, people are saying, okay, we have to pick this day, we have to connect with one another. And regardless of what is being said, because there's definitely going to be people who bullshit or try to like talk you out of it or whatever else. No matter what, we have to come together and we have to protest and demand change. 
That's the only way we're going to have progress. You know, as, as Sanders says, um, an economy and political system that works for everybody in progress, not just for the oligarchs, not for people who exploit others. You know, it's not a sustainable system. It's going to create more and more sociopathic, exploitive people because everybody's going to be like, oh, in order to make it, I have to be like these nut jobs. It's going to create a very unsustainable environment of everybody just being awful to each other at all times. That That's a terrible future. So we got to we got to come together and start doing things. Um, you know, don't de don't depend on these politicians. Don't depend on what they say, what they promise. Uh, these problems have been going on for generations. Everybody, I'm not just talking about the past 10 years or 20 years. This is like 40, 60, 70, 80 years, 90 years, uh, if not longer. So there's been some spot cleaning throughout the stream. Um, <laughs> I did find it important to discuss this, y'all, just because the midterms are at, um, we're in that state right now. So um, I am going to be talking about it more in the future, but uh, today it pretty much took up most of the stream, I'm going to say. Um, but since I do have to call it quits for the night, uh, I do want to remind you guys that tomorrow is going to be a special intro. It's going to be the 100th uh, stream of figure drawing basics. And I'm going to be um, celebrating it by showing you guys this really cool 15 minute animation. Um, it's beautiful work all around. Really cool message. Uh, it is adult content. It's going to be NC-17 just to warn you guys, so uh, look out for that. Um, but tune in tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to check it out. I'm excited to show it to you guys. I'm excited to watch it with you. Um, and, um, and yeah, I'll see you then. If you guys enjoy this content, just remember to hit the like and subscribe button. They both help the stream. They're absolutely appreciated by yours truly, uh, and they help reach out to a wider audience. All right, everybody, uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you tomorrow.